Now here I want to make a very important point, and that's that we have basically solved the fluid mechanics problem at this point, or at least you could argue that. We've obtained a differential equation and boundary conditions that, when solved, will give us the velocity field. That's going to give us Vz as a function of r. It's going to give us the shape of the velocity distribution in the pipe. So this is the fluid mechanics problem. From this point forward, it becomes a math problem. It becomes a differential equations problem. And, th and that's something that I really want to point out because, you know, you, a lot of times in fluid mechanics we end up with some equations that require some mathematical tricks or mathematical manipulations to arrive at the solution. But those are math issues. Uh, and that's due to the nature uh, of the differential equations, uh, the form of the differential equations associated with the Navier-Stokes equations. But the fluid mechanics is embedded here. So a lot of people sometimes become intimidated by fluid mechanics. They think it's hard because they see all these complicated equations. But it's important to separate the fluid mechanics from the math. The fluid mechanics is basically just Newton's second law of motion, F equals MA, applied to a fluid element. That's how we obtained this equation. That's the physics that's involved here. And the form that that takes involves some mathematical complexity. But we'll be able to deal with that. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. Okay, let's take a look at this equation and see if we can make some insights that may help us uh, to uh, solve it. And the first thing that I want to point out is that the way I've written it, this quantity on the left-hand side, dp dz, is a function of z only. And this quantity on the right-hand side involves terms that are only functions of r. So the whole right-hand side is just a function of r only. So the only way I can have a function of z only equal to a function of r only, always, is if they're both equal to a constant. So this insight allows me to decouple these two parts of the differential equation. I think this is probably called separation of variables approach, something like that. How do I know this left-hand side is a function of z only? Well, remember when we went through the conservation of momentum for the r and theta components, I preserved these pressure gradient terms, and those told me that I don't have a pressure gradient in the r or theta direction, so therefore the pressure is not a function of r, and the pressure is not a function of theta. So I used that insight when I wrote the equation this way to make this uh, to make this observation. All right, now let's take a look first at this term. And this is a bit of an aside uh, here because the way we express pressure gradients in these fluid mechanic problems, especially those involving pipe flow, sometimes causes some confusion. So the first insight that we can make is that this pressure gradient dp dz is constant. Right? Because, again, the only way a function of, that's a function of z only can equal a function of r only always is if they're both equal to the same constant. Now let me draw again the geometry that we have. We have a pipe, cylindrical pipe of uh, radius a and, and length l. And I'm going to define the inlet to this pipe as station 1 and the outlet to this pipe as station 2. So at station 1, let's say the pressure is p1. And at station 2, the outlet, let's say the pressure is p2. Okay, so now, if this pressure gradient dp dz is constant, what does that tell us about the pr how the pressure varies in the z direction? So this says that the rate of change of pressure as a function of z is constant. So basically the slope, or the gradient, of pressure as a function of z is a constant slope. So therefore, the pressure gradient, or the pressure in the z direction, varies linearly with position. And I can see that again if I integrate this, the integ integral of a constant is some linear function of z. So the pressure changes from inlet to outlet in a linear fashion. And so then I can express this gradient as the difference in the pressure at the outlet minus the pressure at the inlet over the position at the outlet z2 minus the position at the inlet z1. So this difference in length is L. 
and I have P2 minus P1 in the numerator. Now notice that if I want to have flow in the positive z direction, if I want to have flow from left to right through this pipe, then the pressure at 1 has to be greater than the pressure at 2 in order to drive a flow in the positive z direction. If the pressure were greater at 2 than at 1, then I'd have flow in the opposite direction from right to left. So in order to have flow in the positive z direction, I actually need a negative pressure gradient. Right, this is actually a negative quantity because P2 is less than P1. So P2 minus P1 is actually negative. So often, because we recognize that we need to have the pressure at 1 greater than the pressure at 2 in order to drive a flow uh, in the positive z direction, often we can define a term called the pressure drop, delta P, which is defined as P1 minus P2. And this is a positive quantity. Why do we do that? Well, oftentimes it seems that we prefer to work with positive numbers rather than negative numbers. So it's basically the same thing, it's just arranged in a way that makes this pressure drop a positive quantity. So if we say the pressure drop across this pipe is, you know, 100 psi, then that means that the P1 minus P2 uh, is 100 psi. But now if we want to use this pressure drop term, in our equation, then we need to rearrange it a little bit. And specifically, we need to uh, basically take the negative of this quantity because the pressure drop is defined as P1 minus P2. So we can define minus dp dz as P1 minus P2 over L or delta P over L. So basically, we could either write our differential equation like this recognizing that this is a, a negative quantity. We have a negative pressure gradient to establish flow in the plus z direction. The pressure has to drop as we increase in z. Or we can define that in terms of a positive quantity, a positive pressure drop, and take the minus uh, basically uh, of that and use that in the equation. So this is important because you may see this written different ways. You may see it written like this in some textbooks. Uh, you may see it written in like this in other textbooks. And they're the same thing, it's just that they're defined in a different way uh, to make or talk about the pressure change from the inlet to outlet in a more convenient way. But sometimes it's not convenient because it may cause extra confusion.